tiny orchid time. Hi, thank you so much for your interest in this video. I'm going to preempt it. I'm going to call it before I lose my little Lilliputana. You see, the thing with this little orchid is I've been keeping it in this bowl only with a tad of water at the bottom every day. And then I would let that water evaporate until the next day and I would put water back in just to make sure that these little structures don't dehydrate during the hottest months of the year because there was no sign of root growth or anything. And I was very concerned about potting it up too soon and not being able to maintain a certain level of humidity around the orchid and risking that it would just, you know, frazzle away on me. Now, when I got her, I had another growth in the back on this side of the rhizome and that has actually deteriorated. So I'm very, very cautiously optimistic about this piece surviving and literally I could pull it off, but I'm not going to. Even though all the bulbs are dead and this growth is living on a prayer, it doesn't produce roots soon, I think we're going to lose this whole side of the orchid. I'm just very reluctant to do anything about it now because at the base of some of the pseudobulbs, I know, I'm stretching my hope, I know, but there's still some green which could provide some energy for this little one there. This side of the orchid I'm a little bit more positive about. There's a lot more going on and I have been really babying this root. This is the one little sign of life, apart from the orchid trying to grow a new growth right here. But yeah. There's a root. And then I saw the other day that there's another root coming out the back here, right there. And I'm like, yeah, okay, now I'm going to do something about it. It's growing another tiny growth there. I've had an attempt at roots growing over here, but maybe the whole climate has now gotten a bit too wet. So I'm just gonna take my intuition and Pop this little Lilliputana up and hope that I did the right thing timing wise and it will then just be able to be left alone without me having to manipulate it. Even though I've only ever had it perched on the tag right there, hardly moving it. But you know, mechanical damage is worse when you have to keep handling an orchid. So we're gonna pot her up. And what I would like to do afterwards, because I'm talking about tiny orchids, Afterwards, I want to show you the other tiny ones that I have and give you a quick update on those. Right. Semi-hydro itty bitty pot. And I'm going to crock it with the dirty lecker, the broken lecker, all the little pieces that I gathered out and separated from the large pieces so that I don't waste any good, let's say, media. This can be at the bottom. It can provide me with humidity. My next step is to follow that with very, very small lava rock, tiny pieces, one centimeter and less, just to give me the next layer so that it isn't so wet all throughout the pot. But I do need some humidity. I do need some water retention. So my next layer will be Akadama with grit, 60% grit, 40% Akadama and that I'm hoping will provide me with the wicking from the semi-hydro. It is a small pot. I don't have to really worry about not getting enough water around the growing roots or hydration for that matter. I'm just going to put my tag in before I start with the orchid so I get that out of the way because I don't want to be jiggling around. There we go. Right, that's my next layer. Now, because the roots are so fine, I really don't want to rot them. And yes, I, I have not moved, removed any like old roots or anything like that. Whatever fell off during the month since I've had her, which was since May, 2021, I've left the roots on and whatever fell off, fell off during the process. What I would like to do, however, is to get them in because the reason they are there is to help me with anchoring. So I've noticed over the months how this orchid does, because of the older pseudobulb, 
does saturate and absorb the water quite quickly, and that was great for the hot part of the year. But now we're moving into fall and winter. I don't want this high water retention around the base for too long. I don't want to risk any rot. Everything that's happening now, it has to survive. Otherwise, this little one is not going to make it. So what I'm going to do around the orchid is just apply a little bit of just grit, tiny, tiny grit. And that's going to be my little buffer of dry around the orchid and the base so that the Akadama can do its thing from below, but not seep into the tiny structures from the side. And just get that grit right into the rhizome to help with a drying effect around it. And then I have larger pieces of lava rock because I want to prop them around the orchid as a little bit of additional support for as long as it takes for her to get established. Now I remember all the growths were on this side right there. So I'm going to prop her up from behind just to give her some stability. The back here, again, those little pseudobulbs were actually already quite desiccated. I had one little bit of a green one left right there. So this is just to help with some of the stability around the orchid in the hopes that in the next few months, six months maybe, she will have survived and rooted herself in. And what I'm going to do for future humidity support, if for example, from here on in, I do get a very, very dry day and the wind is warmer than the time of year actually allows, I've got myself my little sleeve here, and this is how she will be very protected. She has a little dome around her. Dehydration from the leaves is what I'm trying to avoid. I really want her to have the energy to survive, and that's why I've been putting off potting her up sooner, because I had much better control of being able to, you know, keep her supported with some humidity around her in a little bowl like this. So I'm really hoping that this will now help her along as well for the eventuality that it gets warm on an off day, maybe during the transition into fall to winter. But I do want to flush her because all that media was dry. And I'm going to do that right now, making sure that my holes are on the opposite side for the orchids that are all down there. This is just plain RO water. I have been supporting her with cow mag and seaweed for quite some time and I'm still going to be flushing her with a very very low dose of calcium and magnesium and seaweed 100 parts per million in total but 60 of that will be calcium and magnesium and 40 of that will be seaweed so I will continue with that however now that she's in there with hardly any roots I'm going to have to take that out of the equation more than I normally would because I don't want any salt buildup around the top of the media there so for now, that is my little Lilliputana, and I'm going to bring the other two that I find are my tiniest orchids in my collection, and let's have a look at them in a little update. That's the three tiniest orchids I've got, all Rapiculus Lelias. So the Lilliputana, we just potted up, and I measured her previously, and her tallest structure is at six centimeters. Her rhizome, even though it's half dead at one end, is also six centimeters in total, but I'm going to go by the structure. So very, very thin little pseudobulbs. Oh, she's six centimeters long, so that's pretty good. Here's Lelia Itambana, and she is actually smaller than Lelia Lilliputana. <laughs> Coming in with her biggest growth at a stonking three and a half centimeters. Woohoo, proud little girl. <laughs> but I don't think she's as tiny as my Lilliputana because look at her chubby structures. The fleshy leaves, there's really substance there. And that's why she is not that difficult to hold on to. And she had enough storage organs to pull through. I got her last year in September, so she's got a year's head start with me. But you see, that wasn't, in my opinion, as complicated. But tiny, tiny, she just has a lot more substance in her storage organs to be able to pull through. And here's my Lelia Gracilis. From the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. A gift last year in November 2020. 
If I elongated that growth, that's right there by the tape measure, we would reach four and a half, round about there, centimeters. And the back one, same, around four and a half centimeters. So she's also tiny, tiny. However, I find her also to be a little bit more bigger than my Itambana because she has longer extended pseudobulbs. So her storage organs are also a little bit more extensive, even though her foliage is a little bit more narrow. But I consider these three, oh, and look, ta-da, we didn't see that in my Rapiculus Lelia Blitz update. There was no new growth. I was concerned about the leaf drop, but we've got a new growth right there. <laughs> it's so hard to point at it. There we go. That's perfect, I love it. And I'm hoping that this side will also start a new growth, but I can't see anything just yet. This side is where I lost some leaves. Woo! Where I lost some leaves right here. But hey, one new growth, let's keep it going. But you see how when it comes to saying my tiniest orchids, I find the ones that are more vulnerable and that don't have as many storage organs, this would be my tiniest orchid, even though she's taller than the Itambana and the Gracilis. It's just the structures. And that is why they're so, so difficult. They say it's difficult to grow the little ones in private collections, etc. It isn't. You can see it can be done. It's difficult to get them to survive the trauma of being taken out of wherever they came from when they have tiny little structures like this. That is the difficulty. Growing them is not a problem. <laughs> It's getting them to survive and then get some roots going when they're this, this tiny. Anyway, Lilliputana has a new home. I can update my notes. And uh, yeah, now I have to wait for the other ones that are still, still waiting to show signs of roots. The other ones I'm not potting up, even though I could. But if they're at the same stage in mid-September as they are now, then I can pot them up because the hottest months of the year will have passed and I don't have to worry about the ICU setup and the rapid dehydration because of transpiration through the leaves. Anyway, you can see I'm already babbling. I don't want to get off topic, don't want to waste your time, but I thank you very much for your time and for watching this video. If you have any questions, you know the drill. Comment in the comments below. I'll be very, very happy to elaborate. And if it warrants a video, I will definitely dedicate a video just to answer your question. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye.